Hello everyone, I am the Meta Kirby and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander from Call Time, Magda Brazen Outlaw. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube, while higher tier patrons get access to the VIP section of my Discord server as well. You can find a link to both down in the description. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Magna is a 2-1 Dwarf Berserker for 1 Generic and 1 Red. Magda is clearly the Dwarf Tribal Commander, but not just because she pumps all other Dwarves we control by plus 1 plus 0, but because whenever a Dwarf we control becomes tapped, she creates a treasure token. As if that weren't amazing enough, we can sacrifice 5 treasure tokens to cheat an artifact or dragon from our library onto the battlefield. This ability is what facilitates one of the win cons of the deck. Ideally, we want to have 10 treasures out so we can cheat in both Mikos Atlantis and Hellkite Tyrant at the end of the turn before ours. The Lattice turns all of our permanents into artifacts, so we should control 20 permanents by the time our upkeep happens. Unfortunately, the Tyrant will not trigger unless we have the 20 artifacts during our upkeep already there. So we can't tap Dwarfs in response to our upkeep to try and get enough treasure to trigger the Tyrant. By then, it'd be too late. That being said, if we have enough artifacts, we might simply cheat in Hellkite Tyrant and win without the Lattice. However, depending on how our game is going, we can use the Lattice to win with Karn the Great Creator. If we control Karn when we cheat win with the Lattice, our opponent's permanents can't be activated so they can't tap lands for mana, etc. They can still attack us, but it'd be very difficult for them to continue playing, and some of them might simply scoop and concede you the victory. Karn is still good on his own since he shuts down mana rocks and other utility artifacts, as well as animating one of our non-creature artifacts. Darksteel Forge is another great artifact to cheat in from our library in case you want to grind your game. Combined with Micah Lattice, it'll make all of our permanents indestructible so we can smash face with our Dwarf Horde with complete disregard. In my brew, I've included all these avenues just to mix it up so I can play the deck depending on the power level of the pot I play in. As for getting out as many treasures as possible as quickly as possible, fortunately Magna only costs 2 mana so the latest you can get her out is turn 2. The bad news is that good dwarves in mono red are few and far between. That being said, what we want is the treasures, so we can make do with dwarves that have a tapping ability. That way we're not limiting to crewing vehicles or attacking with our dwarves to create treasures. Mine Layer, Dwarven Miner, Dwarven Blast Miner, and Dwarven Driller are the meanest ones since they go after lands. Except for the Driller, they require mana to activate so keep that in mind. That being said, they're great at getting rid of key lands of opponents as well as getting us treasures with Magna. Dwarven Thaumaturgis is also disruptive since it can switch a creature's power and toughness. Not only is that a great combat trick, but it can help get rid of creatures with zero power. That might not be a very common occurrence, but at least it could tap without needing mana. Whipkeeper is another dwarf with a combat trick ability. It can help finish off any creature dealt damage, but most importantly, it can tap down without paying mana for it. Dwarven Armor is from back in the day when positive counters weren't just plus one plus one. That being said, it's a one drop that only costs one to activate along with discarding a card. We can use it to beef up Magnus Toughness one plus zero plus one counter at a time. Dwarven Nomad and Dwarven Warriors are also useful as getting a buff to a dwarf. In this case, making a weak dwarf unblockable. This is great with Magna since she just has 2 power. That way, she could tap to attack and create a treasure token that way. Axgar Cavalry also provides a boon in the form of haste. Just like the previous 2 dwarves, it doesn't require mana to activate. Tapping to give a creature haste is very useful, especially since the deck has a lot of dwarves with abilities that require tapping. Speaking of, the deck is also running Thousand Year Elixir and Fervor in order for our dwarves to tap down the same turn they enter the battlefield. They can't attack the same turn with the elixir, but as I mentioned, these dwarves are more for ensuring we get treasures from Magnum. However, an even better way is to simply tap them down with cards like Karen Negotiations and Dwarven Blood Boiler. Karen Negotiations are great at pinging opponents and planeswalkers, which is quite the bonus, considering we only wanted to tap down dwarves. The Blood Boiler isn't that powerful either, but we can use it in tandem with either Dwarven Normat or Dwarven Warriors. We can first make Magda unblockable and then tap down a bunch of dwarves to make her bigger and potentially take out an opponent in just a couple of turns. This is a good backup plan considering that the real reason we want this card in this deck is because it's a dwarf that can tap down our dwarfs for free and at instant speed even if they had summoning sickness. Springleaf Drum, Holdout Settlement, and Survivor's Encampment also help in tapping down dwarfs. Not only will we create a treasure token thanks to Magda, but we also generate mana, so they're definitely helpful in accelerating the deck as well. The lands already tap for mana and don't enter the battlefield tapped, so they're amazing here. Since depending on Magda, cheating in our win cons might seem too linear or a bit fragile given that a well-timed opposition agent or even mind sensor will hinder it, we can still take advantage of our dwarves for a grindier game. With cards like Adaptive Automaton, Obelisk of Erd, Vanquisher's Banner, and Coat of Arms can really beef up our dwarves. Coat of Arms can especially be game-ending with enough dwarves on the battlefield. The Obelisk is not only good in any tribal deck but especially busted in this one since we can tap down dwarves to convoke it, getting us treasures if we have Magda out. 
the automaton enters as a dwarf, so it's yet another creature that can get us treasures. The banner is amazing since it also draws us cards. Torbrand Thane of Redfell is another way to increase our dwarf's damage output by 2 points. Being a dwarf himself is obviously the main point of running him, but being able to increase the damage of our red sources do add up quite quickly. 7 dwarves are janky but good especially since we can run all 7 of them in the deck. As I mentioned earlier, there aren't many decent dwarves to choose from in mono red, but at least these take up Slevin's slots in the deck. On their own they don't do much, but the more that enter the battlefield it can quickly add up, especially since Magda is already pumping them plus 1 plus 0. Given that the deck is also running Molten Echoes and Kindred Charge and you can really get something going. The token copies created are exiled at the beginning of the next end step, but since they are expendable, you might as well attack with them that turn in order to put pressure as well as creating a treasure token. Kindred Charge is especially busted since it can be used to close out a game if we have enough dwarves on the battlefield. Speaking of dwarf tokens, Dwarven Mind and Fearless Liberator also create them. Since the deck is running all fetch lands it can, we can use them to fetch for the mine whenever we have 3 other mountains. We can also just use them to thin the deck of lands too. The Liberator doesn't tap to use its ability, but at least it can create a dwarf token each of our terms if it attacks. As for the other card advantage the deck has resides Vanquisher's Banner, the best one is by far Dwarven Recruiter. So much so that the deck is also running Imperial Recruiter in order to get it, thus counting as a second copy. The Recruiter is incredibly busted since we can top deck as many dwarves as we want. We can then draw into them with a wheel or other effect in order to get them. Unfortunately, this isn't as busted as with Goblins, but at least we can use it to get Dwarven Blood Boiler and all of the remaining copies of 7 dwarves on top of our library. Herald's Horn and Icon of Ancestry are synergistic ways we can keep Steve rolling. As a bonus, the horn reduces the cost of our dwarves by 1 generic and the icon pumps our dwarves an additional plus 1 plus 1. Since both effects are putting cards in our hands and not drawing them, it bypasses effects that care about us drawing like Nekosar, Hull Breacher, etc. Endless Atlas and War Room are straight to the point card draw though. The deck is running 18 snow covered mountains so it's incredibly likely that Endless Atlas will be able to draw us a card for just 2 mana. War Room coming in untapped and producing land means that it doesn't take up a slot in the deck. Being monocolored is great since we only lose 1 life each time we activate it. Megas of the Wheel, Wheel of Misfortune, and Reforged the Soul are the wheel effects in the deck to really ensure we don't run out of steam. As I mentioned in my Call of the Forge Master deck tech video, due to how Wheel of Fortune is presently a 250 plus card when it would used to be about $10 8 years ago, I will no longer recommend it in my deck techs. If you already have it, then great. At least Wheel of Misfortune is a decent enough substitute if you manage to not lose its minigame. Thrill of Possibility, Wild Guess, Tormenting Voice, Faithless Looting, Pirate's Pillage, and Seize the Spoils are pretty self-explanatory loot spells that can help us dig through our deck for a low casting cost. The last two are more overcosted than the others, but that's because we get treasure for our trouble. This synergizes well with Magda, so we're killing two birds with one stone. The great thing about Magda costing two mana is that we really don't have to worry that much about recasting her a couple of times in a commander game. That being said, Lightning Greaves and Swift Boots are included just in case. Not just for protecting Magna, but because they give haste as well. The Greaves are especially useful since they cost 0 to equip, so we can move them around to Dwarves with tap abilities if they still have summoning sickness. They're also especially useful to protect our most important Dwarves like Dwarven Blood Boiler. Cavern of Souls also helps our Dwarves by making them uncounterable. Last thing we need is getting Dwarven Blood Boiler or Dwarven Recruiter countered. As for protecting our Wincon, Red Elemental Blast, Pyroblast, and Tibalt's Trickery are included. An overloaded Cyclonic Rift or Vandal Blast can really set us back since our tokens disappear because of the Rift. Since Vandal Blast is a sorcery, we can at least get Mycocephalatus onto the battlefield at the end of the turn before ours to not have to worry about it. That being said, our own Vandal Blast can also be a way to have the table scoop and concede us the game if we overloaded it with Mycocephalatus on the battlefield. Even without it, an overloaded Vandal Blast is still a great way to do in multiplayer games of Commander. Chaos Warp can help with any other permanent at instant speed. Its inclusion is pretty self-explanatory for that reason. Blood Moon and Magus of the Moon are included to make it difficult to interact with us, especially for multicolored decks. Whilst other non-basics lands are mounted, it's very difficult to cast any removal or counter spells at us. We can even tutor for the Magus with Imperial Recruiter if we're up against 3 multicolored decks. As for powering the deck, the mana curve is pretty small but we need acceleration. Mox Amber, Mox Opal, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Full War Stone are pretty self-explanatory as your standard mana rocks. Mox Amber and Mox Opal are the best moxes for the deck since Magna only costs 2 mana to cast and can let the Amber tap for mana and creating treasure tokens helps the Opal tap for mana especially since Great Furnace and Dark Seal Citadel are also in the deck. Although fragile against artifact hate, they don't take up a slot in the deck and are essentially free mana rocks that simply cost a land drop to play. They're also helpful in potentially giving Hellkite Tyrant that final push to get us to win. Ruby Vindalion reduces the cost of our red spells by one generic so it's a no brainer here. Being artifact is especially useful thanks to Hellkite Tyrant as I just mentioned. Burnished Heart is another artifact but it's more useful for helping us ramp early on considering that mono red doesn't have much access to land based ramp. That being said, Walking Atlas and Terrain Generator are useful in dropping us lands from our hand. 
If we're drawing into too many lands, these are very useful in getting us about 3 land drops per turn. The generator is limited to basic lands and costs mana to activate, but at least it's a mana generating land that doesn't enter the battlefield tapped. The rest of the lands in the deck are Ancient Tomb and Nykdos Shrine to Nyx, which are all stars here. The Shrine especially since it has the potential to tap down for a ton of mana. Again, the deck isn't that mana hungry and doesn't need to generate a lot of mana to function, but since a lot of our dwarves require mana to activate to tap down, it's good to not have to choose between casting spells and tapping down our dwarves. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Magna Brazen Outlaw. Even though I chose to build this deck as a Dwarf Tribal Beatdown Plan B, with Plan A being getting our win con out as early as possible, you can still just as easily build a jankier deck but with a better selection of Dwarves by including vehicles as well. That way you're tapping down your Dwarves to crew your vehicles and getting treasure while you do so. However, I wanted to make a more consistent path in brewing Magda, especially this version since I love commanders that turn trash cards into gold. That's the real treasure Magda creates if you ask me. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link, that also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Meta Kirby, and happy brewing!